Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today we're going to make a procedural aperture with animation nodes. I don't know if you ever need this thing, but personally I think it's kind of useful to me, so I made it. Also to mention that this is inspired by Sergey from Twitter. He also used the Blender animation node to do this. But he took a quite different approach that I haven't studied yet. Uh, but if you are curious, then the link to that tweet is provided, in which he also provided his node tree in the thread. Anyway, I'm going to share my method, so let's go. So firstly, let's generate a plane. And I'm going to go to edit the mode and uh, dissolve one vertices to make it a triangle. And then within the node tree, I'm going to hit Ctrl A and search for distribute matrices. I'm going to change the type to circle. And I'm also going to take a loop input. I'm going to set the type. Uh, so I'm going to hit this plus icon in parameter and set a vector list. And then I'm going to hit W, goes to write and create a sub program. So here I'm going to take an integral input and I'm going to link the amounts, like omega 10, to the iteration and put the vector into vector list. So basic concept of this entire setup is that I'm going to create every triangular element of aperture through this loop. And uh, the way to create that is I'm going to connect this point, this point, and the center point together so that to generate the triangle faces. So by doing that, uh, we're going to firstly get this point and then get the second point. So we're going to use a get list element, put the list into list, and put the list into other one. So it's possible that you simply just uh, add a index to one so that it has been offset but there is always a better method if you take a shift list and shift the one so that this this point will always be one advanced to the others in the list and also this loop now currently I think it will be run six times because it has six iterations uh, each time the first the leading point should be different should be offset within each loop so to do that it's just easy it's just put the index into that the in, because the index will change for every loop so it, for the first loop the index will be zero and for the last loop which is the sixth loop the index will be five so in, by doing so you're shifting the index with uh, the you're shifting the element within this list so that you're getting different elements each time within the loop. And then we're going to uh, create vector list. And I'm going to add a new input. So now we are actually regenerating. So let's simply take this entire thing. So now we get already three points within each loop. And if you just uh, shift the loop, then it will be the other three group. It's kind of idea. Next thing, we are going to investigate the ability for this aperture to open up. So to move these elements are very tricky. Uh, you can try by yourself, but uh, either you have separations or intersections. It's actually very hard to do. Uh, the whole principles to do the movement is you have to move um, in the direction which is the tangent to the, this virtual circle. So this element should move to that direction. And that the second circle here should move in that direction, which is tangent to this point of circles. Otherwise, it will always cause some whatever errors. You can try by yourself. But once you know these principles that you have to move along the tangent, then it's easy. Then we just get the tangent. So let's take a spline from points. Put the vector list into the points. And I'm going to turn that cyclic so that we have a full circle. Then we need to uh, evaluate the spline. Put the splines into that. I'm going to set the type into uniform. And I'm also going to activate this evaluate resolution, or uh, evaluate range. So basically, I'm going to create a vertices on these splines I created. I'm going to put the iteration into the amounts because the iteration is the amount of vertices we created initially, so on and so forth. 
Then now we have multiple tangents, but we only need a single element. So let's put the tangent into that. And based on my experiments, it will only work if you shift one list. So this is the idea. So let's put the index to the index, and let's shift the one list. But essentially, you can try by yourself. You don't necessarily follow to me. So now we have all this translation, and I need to take a vector math to take that to scale. So that by using this factor, I can define the amount, uh, how much this pupil should be opened up. So put the factor into the parameter so I can control. Let's just change that to 0 0.5 so we can see the results right away. And then I'm going to transform vector. And we need a matrix to transform. So simply just to take a translation matrix, put the vector into that, matrix into that. So after this one, this is basically done. The final thing that we need to do is to recreate our triangles. So let's just combine mesh. And then we need object to match data. Because it requires edge indices, polygon indices, uh, I'm simply just to use the mesh data we have from our initial triangle to recreate everything. So here I'm going to hit U, go to socket settings, turn on the edge indices and the polygon indices. And I'm going to select our plane and put the vectors into that. And then there are many different ways if you to regenerate mesh within the loop or outside the loop. Here I'm going to simply just to generate outside the loop. So basically the idea is you just hit this plus icon and type mesh list. So you output a mesh list. And then we're going to regenerate mesh by mesh object output. It will automatically join this mesh list and we let's hit this plus icon. So now we have our pupil done. Or the aperture done. So basically this idea you can control that. So now we still don't really see something specific, but let's just add some modifiers, like a solidify modifier, and then let's bevel that. I really like the bevel. The very unfortunate part is that if you try to boolean that to make a full circle, then this bevel will be... Um, so let's simply just add a cylinder. Make it a large, and try to boolean with that. Uh, where's the boolean? Yes. And then select our stuff. So now if we hide the cylinders, oh, let's make it intersect. Sometimes the mm, the bevel on the outer edge is not very nice, but I think this part is still okay. It's not a super bad, but you get some ideas. And you can definitely change the type. I think, I think this is good. I'm not 100% uh, satisfied with this entire whole thing, but at least it works at this moment. So this is it. Uh, done. Finished. And this is completely proceed. You can change the apertures, whatever, whatever stuff. Uh, and definitely there is some part which I don't like, but anyway, you get a kind of a result. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll publish you next time. Bye bye.